lesson for you. And this week, we are able to find our Bible story in two different books of the Bible. The first place where we can find it is in Matthew 26. Gavin, do you want to come up and find the big 26? Good job. And then the second place, Avery, I'm going to have you find Luke 23. So I'm going to have you find the big two, three. I see it. Nope. Or do you see it? Big two, three. Yeah. Good job. So our Bible lesson today comes from both Matthew chapter 26 and Luke chapter 23. Um, I'm going to read from my book today, and we also have some pictures to show you guys our lesson today. But before we get started, let's go ahead and pray. Okay? So our hands and bow our heads. Dear Jesus, we just thank you so much for this day. And we thank you that today is a day where we celebrate your rising from the dead, Lord. We thank you so much for you loving us in the sacrifice that you willingly have given yourself for us, Lord. And we just pray and ask that you will help us to learn and listen to what it is that you want us to know today, Lord. In your son's name I pray. Amen. I'm going to close my eyes and I do. Avery, wasn't closing her eyes either. That's okay. I didn't close my eyes either. I don't always close my eyes when I pray, but sometimes I do. So, we learned that Jesus had planned to go to Jerusalem, and he told his disciples that he was going to die. When he washed their feet, he talked about his blood washing away the dirtiness of our sin. But the disciples didn't understand that he was really going to die. After washing the disciples' feet, Jesus and the disciples had dinner together. Now it was night, and Jesus had wanted the disciples to go with him to pray in his favorite garden. When they got there, Jesus went off to pray by himself. Soon, the temple leaders and soldiers came and arrested Jesus. The disciples were afraid, and they ran away! Do you guys see the disciples back here? Anywhere with Jesus? No. No. Like, um, I see him. You see Jesus, but the disciples aren't there. They're all going away. Yeah. Yep, they are running away. See, they're not with Jesus anymore. They're leaving. All right, you guys go have a seat. Mm -hmm. Good job with your colors. So, the soldiers took Jesus to the high priest, and the temple leaders refused to believe that Jesus is God's son. They hated his claims to be the Savior. They hated his miracles. They hated how the crowds had followed him and listened to his words. They hated hearing that they were sinners. Carefully, Peter followed the temple leaders. He was afraid. About Jesus. I know. Not about Jesus. Afraid about what? Just a little bit. Go have a seat. Go have a seat. No, not right now. In a little bit. Okay? Have a seat. So, Peter carefully followed the temple leaders. He was afraid, but he wanted to be near Jesus. Go sit down for a minute, okay? Go sit down for a minute. <laughs> You can hang it after the story, okay? Thank you. Can you have a seat? <laughs> oh, careful. So, he was afraid, but he wanted to be near Jesus and stand outside the place where he was taken. He was crying, but there was nothing that he could do. He even said he didn't know Jesus. And the leaders sent Jesus to the governor, Pilate. They made up lies and stirred up the crowd, and Pilate was questioning Jesus, and then said, I don't think this man has done anything wrong. But an angry mob shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! They're crucifying him. That means they wanted to kill him. They wanted him to be hung on a cross. 
And that kind of, a, that's a punishment that people would do for, uh, have for anything that they had done wrong, like a pretty serious crime, right? So they, so if they saw somebody do good, they um, 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 hang them up? No, nope, they wouldn't hang anybody on a cross for doing things that are good. They did it for people who were bad. He wasn't bad, but they lied and said he was bad, okay? So, but Pilate, remember, he said he didn't think Jesus had done anything wrong, but the still angry mob said, crucify him and crucify him. And Pilate listened to the crowd and sent Jesus to be crucified. The soldiers took Jesus and they beat him. Wait, what? They beat him. The soldiers beat Jesus. They beat him up. They gave him punches and kicks. They pulled out his hair. They did lots of bad things to Jesus. He they um um do tricks, mm -hmm. bad tricks. Mm -hmm. They hurt him so badly that Jesus' face didn't look like him anymore. They put a robe on him and they made a crown of sharp thorns and they pushed it on his head. I know. And the soldiers made fun of Jesus, and they made him carry his own cross. At a big hill, Jesus willingly Ew. Mm -hmm. put his body down on a cross for you and me. He let the soldiers pound nails into his hands and his feet. The soldiers set the cross upright into a hole. And that same day, two other men were crucified. And these men were criminals. The, they were wicked and evil, sinful men who had done the terrible crimes. They deserved to die for the things that they had done. They both were nailed on crosses too. And Jesus hung on that cross for hours and hours. Many people stood and watched, and they laughed, and they yelled at Jesus. And Jesus' mother was there, and some of the disciples. They had cried and cried. Soon, Jesus was dead. Two men who loved Jesus asked if, Jesus could take, if they could take Jesus' body and bury it. One rich man owned an empty tomb. I know. Yeah, hold on. So they put Jesus' dead body in the tomb. And a big, heavy stone was rolled in front of the tomb. And then there were two soldiers to guard the tomb. They what? wanted to make sure that Jesus' body was still going to be in that tomb because wow. they had remembered something that Jesus had said. Do you remember what Jesus said after he was going to die on the cross? What did he tell his disciples? Three days later, what was going to happen? He, he will come back alive. He was going to come back alive. So, they wanted to make sure that Jesus' body was going to stay put right in here. They wanted to make sure nothing was going to happen to Jesus' body. So, the soldiers had guarded the tomb, and the leaders did remember that he said he was going to arise from the dead and become alive again. And they thought that the disciples would steal his body and say that he was alive. Now, you might think that this was the end of Jesus. But don't forget, Jesus is the Son of God. So those people who had treated him very badly, and the people who had put him on a cross and made fun of him and laughed at him, Jesus did that for all of those people because he loved them. And he did that same thing, dying on the cross and going through all of that hard stuff that had happened to him for you and for me. He willingly and lovingly did that for us so that we could live forever with him one day in heaven, if we believe in Jesus as our Savior. So, remember though, 
that God had a wonderful plan. And three days later, early in the morning, there was an earthquake. And an angel came from heaven and rolled the stone away and sat on it. And the soldiers ran away because the soldiers were afraid. So, just at that time, some women were coming to put spices around Jesus' dead body. And they had worried about moving that heavy stone. They weren't sure what was going to happen and how they'd be able to do that. And, what do you guys see here? Is there anybody in this tomb? No. No. There's an angel sitting here. But Jesus is no longer in the tomb. What do you think? The angel told the ladies who were coming to put spices on Jesus' body. What spices? I don't know. What spices? Um, spices that they used back in those times to help uh, preserve the body and keep it from um, getting stinky and stuff like that. They just kind of did some of those things at the time. What happened, Avery? What did the angel say? What did he tell the ladies? He said that. Good job. So let's say that again. Okay, we'll get it for you in a minute. What did what did the angels tell the ladies? I know what those ladies are. They said Jesus is not in the tomb anymore. Right? Because of what? Jesus came back alive. He came back alive. That's right. Okay, let's go have a seat. So that is why we are able to be happy because Jesus is alive. He didn't stay dead. Nothing could keep Jesus from rising from the dead. Okay, just a minute, all right? So, is that something that we can thank Jesus for? Yes. Yes. Is that something we should be thankful for? Yes. Yes. So let's find out what is happening with our friends. Emily. Emily, and who else? Mike. Michael. That's right. I said I did one last movie. A one last word. One last word? It's called Emily and Michael. Emily and Michael. Alright. So Emily called mommy. Could you help me please take this laundry up to my room? Emily picked up the basket. This isn't even my laundry. Why do I have to carry it upstairs? She whispered under her breath as she trudged up the stairs. Later, Daddy asked Michael to sweep the floor. Michael made a face and grumbled. I didn't drag all this grass into the house. Why do I have to sweep the floor? But he did it anyways because he didn't want to get into trouble. Michael and Emily had gotten into a bad habit. They grumbled if they were asked to help. All week, Michael and Emily sighed and grumbled. Finally, Friday arrived, and Mommy had said the whole family could ride their bikes to the park on Saturday for a picnic, if the weather was nice. No chores. They could just play and have fun all day. Mommy greeted them as they walked in the door. I hope you two had a good day, she smiled as she pulled out milk and cookies for a snack. Since we're going to have a fun day tomorrow, we need to get our Saturday chores done this afternoon. When you are done with your snack, I will tell you what you need to do. If we work together, we can get everything done and not have to do them when we get home tomorrow. Let's have a chores challenge and see who gets done first. Chores? On a Friday afternoon? Yuck! Michael and Emily sighed and grumbled as they ate their snack. You can both pick up the living room. Michael, you run the vacuum and Emily will dust. I will clean the bathrooms, Mommy instructed. Michael and Emily trudged into the living room, and they were both upset. Michael, we would not have to do all this cleaning if you weren't such a slob. I'm not picking up your dirty socks, she shouted. Me? Whose coloring books and crayons are these? I'm not picking up your dumb books, Michael yelled back. This is unfair. I didn't make this mess. Why do I always have to clean up after everyone else, Emily snapped. You? Why, just yesterday, I had to sweep everyone's mess off the floor, Michael pouted. Mommy heard the angry voices and came with hands on her hips, not with what bit, one bit happy. What seems to be the problem, she asked. 
My floor is a slab. It's not my fault the living room is a mess, Emily declared. And I'm sick of doing housework, Michael complained. Mommy shows in the laundry basket. I wash all these clothes every week for my family. And I bake cookies so you'd have a yummy snack after school. Daddy doesn't make the grass grow, but he mows it so the home God gave us is taken care of. We do chores to help our whole family. And instead of complaining, I expect you to obey me and serve each other, Mommy instructed. Michael and Emily were quiet. They knew they had been selfish. They wanted all the fun and none of the work. Maya continued, we need to practice having humble, willing hearts. Jesus is our example. He willingly allowed himself to be arrested and put to death for our sin. The least we can do is model Jesus' humility with our daily tasks. It was very quiet in the living room. I'm sorry, Mommy. You're right, Emily confessed. I've been selfish all week. Me too, Michael agrees. I never thought about Jesus obeying and serving others, and he served us too. Mommy gently encouraged them. We should feel sorry for our sin, so we should go to God and ask for his forgiveness and thank him for sending Jesus who made forgiveness possible. Mommy prayed with Emily and Michael, and they both confessed their sin to God, and they asked God to help them be more like Jesus. Everyone got busy, and soon the house was clean. And now they felt good about going to the park. So why were Michael and Emily grumpy? <coughs> why were they grumpy? Uh, because um, what did they not want to do? Clean up the whole entire mess. Right. They didn't want to clean up the the house. They didn't want to do the chores, and they didn't want to clean up others' messes. And who should be our example of doing hard things and serving others? Who's our example? God. God, and who else more specifically? God. Who died on the cross? God. Jesus. Jesus. Right? So, what did Michael and Emily ask God to do? Um, what, what, did, what did they ask God to do? Um, for what? Yeah, I know. Yeah? Their sin. Their sin? Good job. And what else did they ask him to do? Um, to help them be more like who? Um, to go be nice. Be nice? And who is that being an example of? Um, Michael. Emily. Michael and Emily. Michael and Emily wanted to be an example of who? Jesus or Jesus mm -hmm. or God. Or God. That's right. So we do have a memory verse for today. Okay? And it's right up here. Acts 1631. And this says, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. Acts 1631. Very good job, Gavin. I so, that Bible verse in school. Yeah, it's a very good Bible verse to have. I, I and this Bible verse is a promise to us. So it says that if we believe in the Lord Jesus, you will be saved. So Acts 16.31. And that message, and you're sitting there thinking, well, what do I have to believe? You have to believe that Jesus is God's son, that he came to earth and lived a perfect and sinless life, and that the things that the Bible said that happened to him really did happen, that he died on the cross for our sins, and he rose again the third day. If we believe all of those things and are able to um, ask Jesus for forgiveness for our sins and ask him to be our savior, if we believe that, we're going to be safe. All right, boys and girls, if you have any questions about that, please ask another parent or a Sunday school teacher or your pastor. All right, I hope you all have a wonderful week and that you are able to enjoy this day. Have a nice week. Bye-bye.